Kinetic Molecular Theory, or KMT, looking at molecular kinetics and how it influences phase. Gases are the primary phase which we look at when we're analyzing the behavior of substances and their kinetic terms. We know that a gas, by definition, is something which has an indefinite shape and volume. Most of the gas will be the most fluid phase of the three different phases. Additionally, it is the only one which is easily compressible. That means that I can take the gas and I can push it into a much smaller volume than it usually occupies. Gases are going to have relatively low density, which indicates that their size or the mass of their particles is small in comparison with the total volume that they occupy. They also will exert pressure on their surroundings. That means that they're going to push on whatever container is holding them and that container will push back on them. Gases tend to expand without limit, so if I take a gas, it will continue to grow and grow and grow in volume until it reaches the edges of the container in which it is being held. Gases will mix completely without separating upon standing, so if I take two gases, I can combine them together, and the particles will move past one another until they are completely mixed. If I let that gas sit for a long period of time, it will not separate back into the component gases, but it will remain a mixture. We describe gases by four different properties. We look at them in terms of temperature, which we can consider to be the average thermal energy of the substance, volume, which is the space that the substance occupies, moles, which are the amount of the gas that we see, and pressure where pressure is the force exerted on an area. So if I look at force divided by area, if I were to say push against a wall, the force that I'm applying against that wall and the area over which I'm applying that force is the pressure which is exerted. Think of a piston. A piston pushing down on a cylinder in, say, an engine will exert pressure on whatever is trapped within that cylinder. Now, looking at kinetic molecular theory, KMT operates under four basic assumptions. The first assumption is that the size of the particles of the gas are very small in comparison with the total volume that they occupy. In other words, the gas is mostly empty space. The second assumption is that those particles will continue to move in a constant, random, straight line motion. This means that they're going to always be moving They'll be moving in straight lines. They're not going to zigzag or curve or turn around. And they're going to move in random directions. The only thing that will cause a gas to change direction is impacting against something else, either another gas particle or the container in which the gas is held. You can think of gas particles like pool balls if you're shooting pool. Once the balls begin to move, the only reason that they would change direction is if they were to strike either another ball or the wall of the pool table. So we consider these particles to be in constant random straight line motion. The third the assumption of kinetic molecular theory is that the collisions which these particles undergo are elastic. That means that they're going to maintain their energy. They don't lose energy upon collision. They just transfer it from one particle to another or from one particle to the wall of the container. So we have elastic collisions. And the last assumption is that in between collisions, there is no relative attractive or repulsive force between particles. So the particles can pass by one another without exerting any significant force on each other. So they're not going to change or alter their course when they pass by one another. This is essentially that there is no attractive repulsive force outside of the collisions themselves. Once they collide, they're going to exert force on each other. But in a, any sort of passing outside of collision, they will not exert any force on one another. Now, we can look at the properties of a gas by kinetic molecular theory analysis. Temperature being the average thermal energy of a substance, if we think of thermal energy, thermal energy is a type of kinetic energy. We can know from mathematics that kinetic energy is proportional to the velocity of the particles that are moving. So we can consider temperature to be the average kinetic energy or the average velocity of the gas particles. So the faster the gas particles are moving, the higher the temperature they will have. Or the lower the temperature the gas particles are contained at, the slower they will move. Volume, being the space that is occupied, is the space through which the particles are free to move. 
we and standard kinetic molecular theory because particles don't really interact with one another we can assume that the particles act as though they're the only particle in the container so they assume that the gas being mostly empty the particles can act like they are alone looking at the number of moles or the amount of the substance that's contained we know that we can measure a gas generally in either its mass in grams or in the number of moles it contains that's one way to measure it we also can measure by volume but that's a different topic the mole is related to the number of particles by the number 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles per mole so we can consider a mole to be proportional to the number of particles of a substance that we find. So if we have multiple moles, we have multiple times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So the more moles of a substance we have, the more particles there are. Lastly, pressure being force across area, force divided by area, we know that gases will exert force upon collision. So when they strike either each other or the wall of the container they're in, they're going to exert a force on that container. Now, any sort of force exerted by something striking something else as it moves is going to be related directly to the speed with which that particle hits. So the faster it's moving, this, the more force it will exert when it hits. Think of a car hitting another car at 20 miles an hour versus, say, 60 miles an hour. There's a significant increase in force at a higher speed. Additionally, the more things that are striking within any given time period, the more overall force there will be. So the more force that we have comes from higher speed as well as an increased number of collisions. So we can consider pressure to be proportional to the speed of the particles and the number of collisions that they undergo. So looking at kinetic molecular theory in phase then, we know that particles are brought together by their intermolecular forces, our van der Waals interactions, the hydrogen bonding, the dispersion forces, the dipole-dipole interactions, all pull these particles towards one another. So in reality, the basic assumption of kinetic molecular theory that there is no attractive force is only partially correct. We, it assumes that the force is negligible, essentially, in a gas. So the stronger the force is, though, the tighter those particles are going to be pulled towards one another or into a tighter group. The particles on the other hand, having a kinetic energy are going to try to move away from one another. If you consider something trying to run, like if a person is trying to run away from somewhere and they're being pulled on by something, say somebody's got a hold of their shirt tail, they're still trying to move away even though they're being pulled towards the other person by the grip on the clothing they're wearing. In the same way, the particles are being pulled towards one another by that attractive force, but they're still trying to move away based upon their inherent kinetic energy. You can also think of, say, the space shuttle. The space shuttle tries to exit Earth's atmosphere by its motion, its kinetic energy moving outward away from the Earth. But at the same time, it's opposed by the force of gravity trying to pull the shuttle back to Earth. So the motion of the particle in the end, then, is related to the attractive force of the particles being pulled together versus their kinetic energy or their motion trying to move apart. So we look at how this relates kinetic energy and attractive force to phase. If the kinetic energy is substantially greater than the attractive force, they're able to move apart. It's like the escape velocity in the shuttle. If it has a significant amount of velocity, it can escape the gravitational pull of the Earth. In the same way, a particle can escape the, the attractive force of other particles if its kinetic energy is high enough. These particles will be in a gas phase. If the kinetic energy is somewhat less than the attractive force, they'll be pulled together, but they'll still be free to move. These are the kinds of particles which will exist in a liquid phase. If they, uh, the kinetic energy is significantly less than the attractive force, though, they'll, pull, they'll be pulled together and they'll be pulled into a static position where they're not able to move away at all, and they'll be forced to sit next to one another. These are particles which exist in a solid phase. So we see that as the kinetic energy increases relative to attractive force, we can shift from solid to liquid to gas, and vice versa. As kinetic energy goes down, as I lose kinetic energy, I'll begin to condense from gas to liquid to solid.